Look at this example. We use the symbol like this for this example. It's called the vector space L201. And what is it? It's again quadruple, quadruple, quadruple of objects. L201 plus dot and the field of scalars here, C. Let's just see what kind of object is this. Here it is. L201, this is a collection of all functions on a 0, 1 interval with values in complex numbers. It is a line which reads function with domain 0, 1 with values, with range in complex numbers, but not all of them, with the condition that if you integrate them with a square, you will end up, let me just zoom out a little bit. Ah, good. You will end up with a finite number like this. Well, this is a very different example to the four I just gave you. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, maybe fortunately, because it's a difficult example, you won't see much of the examples involving this particular vector, I mean, much of the problems in the yellow book involving this particular vector space. But those of you who will actually one day meet those financial models you actually endeavor to study, that's why you enrolled in this topic, you will realize how often this space is used there. It's almost, it's so ubiquitous, you can't miss it. Just example, I'll give you the example for you. For instance, this function, the inverse fourth root of x on the interval 0, 1, that's the function which is member of this vector space. Here's, ex here's the argument why it is so. If I compute the square integral of this function, so if I sub in my function in here, we all know how to compute the integrals of power functions. Here's my computation. Function is positive, so I can drop the absolute value. It will be uh, 1 on root x integral. We, know, we all know antiderivative for that. Double substitution 0, 1. And when you compute this, that's the antiderivative. It's a root x for this function. If you compute the integral 0, 1, it will be, I'm sorry, I have to move this a little bit. And it will be 2. So x to the power negative 1 quarter is the typical element of this L2, 0, 1 space. On the other hand, the function like x to the power negative 1 half, it's no longer the member of the L201 space. Look at this. These are my computations. If I compute the integral as in the definition of my L201 space, we all know how to compute the integrals. Again, we have a, we, we're facing the positive function, so I can drop the absolute value. So I will end up with the integral of 1 on x, dx. We all know the antiderivative for that, isn't it? It's a log, natural log. Here it is. With a double substitution, we all know that at the point 0, log blows to the negative infinity. So this will be something which is not converging. So that's the element which is not in that space. It's a highly non-trivial space for many reasons. As from time to time, I will come back to this space to show you the difference between the, what you think you know and what actually may happen. Uh, for instance, even if you remember, we discussed with you axioms. Yeah, it's minus minus. That's right. That's why it's plus infinity. If you, if you recall the axioms from the slide before, remember the first two axioms? The first axiom on the previous slide, it was the axiom closedness and the addition, right? If you take two vectors, if you add them up, they will be again the vector of your vector space. If you try to, to apply that or check or test that axiom with the, with the four examples before this example, with the n tuples of reals, n tuples of complex matrices, it seems very obvious. If you add two n tuples, it will be another n tuple. However, here, it's no longer so obvious. If you have two functions like this, if you have two functions like this, how do you know that if you add them up, that will be another function like this? Actually, this is a place where algebra, we discuss with you, meet with the calculus you discuss with the first hour of the other stream of this lecture. So how do you know if you have two functions which are like this, how do you know that if you take a sum of these two, and that's how you take the sum of these two. 
How do you know that the sum will also be a function like this? So how do you know that the, if you take a sum and square it, how do you know that this will be a finite? Yeah, it's it's non-trivial question.